Welcome to the first screencast on trees, our next abstract data type. So previously we've talked about lists, stacks, and queues, and they are all linear abstract data types in that they have each node or each item in the um, abstract data type has one predecessor and one successor. successor. In the, you recognize our classic double linked node it's still true that even if you have a singly linked node, there is a predecessor to the node, potentially null, and there's only one su successor. So that's just a linear system, a uh, linear abstract data type. And so now we're going to introduce the next abstract data type, which is a hierarchical abstract data type, in that they have one predecessor and multiple successors. So a tree node has one predecessor and multiple successors. In this example, the node has four successors. Um, we'll be talking later about a specific kind of tree, but the general tree can have a, a diff, a, more than one uh, successor node. So I wanna talk a little bit about terminology, basic tree terminology. The root node is the node that has no predecessor. So it is the root of the tree and in computer science all the root all trees grow down. So the root is at the top and they grow down. In this case I have a binary node. So this is a binary tree but if the root of a not binary tree could have multiple children more than two. The next and each branch left and right or middle is points to a node. A branch can point to null which is actually a, a branch, or not a branch, but it's the, the nodes don't, the left or right or middle don't have to actually point to anything that could actually point to null. Next to it is parents and children. The parent is the predecessor, and the child is the successor. So in this example, the root node has two children, and children that have the same parent are called siblings. So they're on the same level. You can think of it that way. They have the same parent, they are siblings. Ancestors, so if you have a deeper tree, the root node is an ancestor of all the nodes in the tree, and they are also, all the nodes in the tree are descendants of the ancestor of the root node. Um, the parent node on the left, descendant is a child. There is no relationship for the right child to the left child because the left child does not is not part of the right child's tree subtree leaf nodes are nodes that do have no uh, successors or have no children and they are different than inner nodes because inner nodes have children and leaf nodes are at the end or the edge of the tree um, the root node is an inner node unless it has no children Subtrees basically are the successors of a node. So in this example, the root node has two subtrees, the left subtree and the right subtree. The left subtree has a node and then it has a subtree. The leaf node, same thing with the right. The leaf node has no subtree because there are no children of the leaf node. We can talk about the level of a node in the tree, and it's basically a recursive definition. If the node is a root, then its level is one. Else, if it's not the root, the level is the level, one plus the level of the parent. So you can, it just basically recursively counts down. So the root is level one, all its children are level two, all their children are level three, and the height of a tree is the maximal level. So in this case, this tree has a height of three. Um, yes. A binary tree is a special kind of tree in that it has a definite, uh, we can use a recursive definition to define a binary tree. A set of nodes T is a binary tree if T is empty. So that's a binary tree. T has no, is empty. Or T is, is a root. The root node has two subtrees, tree left and tree right. 
such that tree left and tree right are binary trees. So if the root has two children or two subtrees, each of those subtrees is a binary tree. So basically you have a but you know nodes with two um, branches left and right and they can be empty or they can be full or they can have subtrees below them. So for example this is a binary tree and one use of binary trees is to store or represent expressions. For example the expression the infix expression x plus y times a plus b divided by c can be represented as this binary tree. You can see that we have the multiply in the middle and then its left subtree is plus and plus subtree has x and y. On the right subtree of the multiply you have the divide and then its left subtree is the plus and its right subtree is a c. We'll talk about that more in later on. <clears throat> a binary search tree is a special kind of binary tree. It's a binary search tree if it's empty or if its root node has sub two subtrees tree left and tree right, such that tree left and tree right are binary search trees, very similar to the binary tree, but the search part is the value in the root node is greater than all the values in the left subtree, and it is less than all the values in the right subtree. And so that's recursive, so the root node is between its left subtree values and its right subtree values. And here's an example of a binary search tree. Dog is greater than all the values in the left subtree. Canine is greater than its left subtree, Beagle. And it's less than its right subtree, Doberman. But Doberman is less than Dog. So the left subtree is less than Dog. And on the right subtree, Wolf is greater than dog, hound is less than wolf, so that left subtree is less than wolf, so that's a binary search tree. So the left subtree is a binary search tree, the right subtree is a binary search tree, so this is a binary sub search tree. Binary search trees are very useful for storing information in an ordered way. You can traverse them and find things. Um, it's a great way of sorting. Um, it is a way of sorting items. By inserting items into the binary search tree correctly, you keep it in a sorted list. And we'll talk about that later on. So, some more terminology. A full binary tree is basically a binary tree such that each node either has no children or two children. So that's a full binary tree. If it has one child, then it's not a full binary tree. It's either two or zero. So the, our expression tree is a full tree because each node either has zero children or they have two children. A perfect binary tree is a full binary tree such that all the leaves are in the same level. And it will have two to the n, which is the level, minus one nodes. In this case, n is three, so we've got seven nodes. So, a perfect binary tree are full, again, they have zero or two, and they, all the leaves are at the same level. A complete binary tree is a perfect binary tree at level n minus one, and the leaves are all in level n, and are all shifted to the left. So, in this case, the, it's not a perfect binary tree at level n because node 5 has one child, which makes it not a full binary tree, but at level n minus 1 it is a perfect tree and all the nodes are to the left, so fill the left subtree first and then you fill the right subtree from left to right. So there are different ways we can traverse or move through a binary tree. And the first order, first traversal that we talk about is a pre-order traversal. So we visit the root node, and then we recursively traverse the left subtree 
doing the tree traversal, the pre-order traversal, and then we recursively traverse the right subtree. So this is a recursive because binary trees are basically recursive definition. We can use recursion to traverse the nodes in the tree. In order is similar. We traverse the left subtree and then we handle the root node and then we traverse the right subtree. So we're going to do left first, then handle the root, and then go to the right. And then post order, we traverse left, we traverse right, and finally visit the root node. So the pre order, you visit the node first, or the in order, you visit it between the two traversals, and post order, you visit it last. So let's take a look at our expression tree and do a pre order traversal. So what's pre-order? We visit the root first. So we visit the root, and I'm writing down the expression. And then we traverse the left subtree of multiply. So we traverse, and now we're at the subtree plus. So what do we do? We visit the root. So we put down the plus symbol. And now we traverse to the left of plus. And then we visit the x subtree. x subtree has, so we visit the root. And now we traverse to the left of the x subtree, there isn't one. We traverse to the right, there isn't one. So now we're done with the x subtree. And so now we can traverse to the right of the plus subtree. We visit y, and then we traverse left, traverse right. So now we've completed the plus um, traversal. So now we can go and we've traversed the left subtree of multiply. So we can traverse right onto the right subtree of multiply. We visit the node divide. We then traverse the left subtree of divide. We see that we have a subtree. We visit the node plus. We traverse to the left of plus. And then we see that we tra process the A. Traverse left, traverse right. We're done with the left subtree of plus. We can traverse to the right. We see we're at B, we process the B. We traverse left, left right, because they're both null. So we've now completed the left subtree of divide, so now we can traverse right, and we visit the right tree, so we process the C, and now we are done with our traversal, because we traverse left on C, traverse right on C, we've completed the traversal right of divide, we've completed the traversal right of multiply, and we are finished with the tree. So we now have a prefix notation for our expression. So the next one is in order. So the first thing we do is we traverse left from the root. We get to the plus subtree. So we traverse left on the plus subtree. We get to the x subtree. We traverse left, but there isn't one. So we visit the root of the x. We traverse right, there isn't anything to do. So now we can visit the root of the plus subtree. And now we traverse right on the plus subtree. We can traverse left on Y, visit the root on Y, traverse right on Y, and now we're finished with the left subtree of multiply, so we can now visit the root of the multiply tree, and we add the multiply to our expression. We now traverse right on that tree, we're at the divide tree, we traverse left on the divide tree, we're at the plus tree, we traverse left on the plus tree, we get to the A, we can't traverse left on A, so we visit the root on A. We've now completed, we traverse right, we're done, so now we can add, visit the plus node. And now we traverse right, and then again we're at B, so we can't, there is no traverse left, we visit the node. And now we traverse right, we have now completed the plus subtree, so now we can visit the divide root node. And then we traverse right on the divide tree. We're at C, we can't traverse left, so we visit the root. We traverse right, there's nothing there. We've completed the divide right subtree. So we've completed our traversal of the, completed our in order traversal of our expression tree. And if we put parentheses around each of the subtrees, we will get the correct expression as shown here where we put parentheses around each subtree and that gives us the correct 
in order um, expression or infix notation for this expression. So the last traversal we'll talk about is post order. So we traverse left, and then we traverse right, and then we visit the node. So we go left on the multiply. We go left on the plus. We're at x. We go to the left. Of, we traverse to the x, which is null. Traverse right to the, of x is null. So we finally visit the root on x. So now we've completed the left traversal on plus. So now we do the traverse right on plus. We get to y. There is no left. There is no right. So we visit the root. So we've completed the left traversal and the right traversal for plus, so now we can visit the root of plus. And so we've got the plus. So now we've completed the left traversal on multiply. So now we go to the right traversal on multiply. We find divide. We traverse left. We're at plus. We traverse left. We're at A. There is no left traverse. There is no right traverse, so we can visit the root. We're now done with the left traverse of plus. We go do the right traverse, and then we hit B, and we visit B, because it has no left, it has no right. We're now completed with the, the left traversal of the plus subtree. We've done the right subtree of plus, so we can visit the plus node. And now we've completed the left traversal on divide, so we go to the right traversal. We get to C, there's no left, there's no right, so we visit the root. We've now completed the left and right traversal on divide, so we can visit the root, so we put the divide. And now we've completed the left traversal and the right traversal on the multiply, so we can visit the root, and we have a postfix notation for this expression. And you can see that we don't need parentheses because we will just operate on the operations when we get to them. When we see the operator, we just apply it to the two left operands and then push the result back on there and we'll get the correct answer. Thank you for your time.